This week on Sundays with Sally, we are checking out the latest from Psyonix and their Night Wave digital camera. Let's go check it out, guys. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Sundays with Sally. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, or maybe you've checked out a couple of videos and you haven't done it yet, go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button down below at Naptronics on YouTube to stay up to date and in the know the latest happenings in the marine industry, as well as some of our weekly build videos. We're in the home stretch on Project Nelly. That has been an amazing project. We're starting to bring online. Same thing with Project Sisu, and we are just kicking off Project One of One, and that project keeps growing. And guys, when that one's done, that's going to be a head turner on top of a head turner. It's going to be amazing. So there's my spiel to hit that like and subscribe and stay up to date and all of that. What are we talking about this week? This week, we are talking psionics. Now, you see right here, this is a psionics that most everybody's familiar with up till now. This was an analog, or is still, rather, an analog camera. This worked really good on your 12-inch MFDs and down, but when we started to put them onto larger MFDs, your 16s, your 19s, your 24s are becoming more and more prevalent. The picture was either being stretched too much on the actual screen to be usable, or we were getting it small, and we were getting a lot of complaints about it. This was a great, still is, a great budget option. But now, they finally heeded the call, and we have a digital version of this. So, reach down here and grab this guy up here. We now have the Psyonix Nightwave Digital. This is a demo model I've got here, pre-production, so, Never mind some of the stickers on it, guys, but this is it. This is how it works. You can see size-wise, really, really close in size, just a little bit bigger. You're going to say the same thing here as far as mounting goes. Really close, just a little off, a little bit different. And this is an IP camera. That means it's going to be a high-def, high-resolution camera camera and all you simply need to do on this here is run a standard ethernet cable to this now this does require that it has a poe or a power over ethernet injector and that good news guys is included in the kit sorry as i keep picking this stuff up here so they're including this power injector. Don't mind the cable here. This is what I had it wired up to test it all out. And it's very simple. It's even labeled. It's got the POE out that goes to the camera and then the data in. That is what is going to your chart plotter. In our case, for video purposes here, I am testing this out on a 19 inch Simrad display. If you are putting this into the Garmin's world of things on here, you are going to need a yellow POE blocker before you drop this in to the Garmin network because this is not a Garmin product. So when you're plugging this in, if you have a Garmin and putting this on there, make sure you go ahead and you order up this yellow P-O-E blocker. That's going to be key for you guys if you're running a Garmin product. In the case of this Simrad, as we're about to show you in this video here, this dropped right into the back of my display. I went in, told it to find the camera. It finds the camera. Bada bing, bada boom. We're off to the races. I got a Psyonix icon on my screen, and I'm able to go ahead as we bring this up on here. We edit this in through the miracle of uh, everything. You're going to see I have a split screen. So I have a dedicated video screen. And beside that, I have the control screen here for it. This is the Psyonix app portion of it. You can do straight up screen, but for filmi filming uh, and doing all of this, I want to be able to show you guys some of the features and how we're using it, being able to switch from day to night to auto and just some of those camera features. So. Without further ado, guys, let's kick into that video. I teased you with on the intro there, showing that Grady White sliding on by. Here we go with this one. Now, before we kick it off, one more thing. 
This was a test unit, guys, and this was mounted in a less than ideal spot. This was mounted on the bow pulpit of my boat, about eight or nine feet off the water. So you're not going to get a reference of a bow on here, but we are gonna get the image quality and everything else. And then one last thing, sorry, one more. This is a fixed mount wide field of view camera. This has no pan, no tilt, anything like that. This is a fixed mount camera. It's also about half the price of the competition. So now let's hit play. Let's go leave the dock here as we go full screen. So here we are, we're leaving the harbor. You can see a very nice, very clean, crisp picture on here. Very smooth. Any lag that you're seeing in here is just the Wi-Fi. Now you're seeing we're heading out of the harbor. We're gonna have a nighttime view of this in a minute. You can see I have a boat coming at me. Very easy to see. And again, very nice picture quality stretched across the 19 inch screen that this was recorded from. Now guys, I'm gonna pause this for a second. I want you guys to pay attention right here. If we look right here, you're going to see that we are in day mode. The sun has now set. It's been set for about 30 minutes at this point in time. So we're kind of in that dusk twilight area. And I have forced the camera to stay into day mode. And then we're going to switch over to night mode so that you can actually get real time footage and see what it looks like for that same scene between day and night as we are in the twilight hours. So we're gonna go ahead and hit play. There we go, we're still in day, we've got our buoy in front of us, our light is flashing on it, we can see it very clearly. And now, here we go, we flipped over tonight. See how those things really start to pop on here when we have this in night mode. It's really awesome, it really kind of shows it. Now this right here, I'm heading back to the harbor and I caught this white sailboat after hours. Again, we're about 35, 40 minutes after sunset. Notice this white sailboat, how much it is really popping off of the screen as we look at it, as well as our flashing lighthouse light there as well. We're seeing that flash of white on that strobe light right there and seeing how easily that is to identify on the screen. So this is really great. Again, we're getting to dusk, it's getting dark, it's getting hard to see, we're in night mode, and this thing is starting to pick up a lot of targets. Again, fixed, we can't pan and tilt. Now, everybody up here wants to know about Lobster pots. First one's passing by right there. You start to see another one coming into frame. They're not popping off the screen, but they are there. Don't bury your head into your chart plotter trying to read this, but you can see there in night mode, we are picking up lobster pots so that we've got that going on. And now the next scene, I believe after this, we're going to be coming back into the harbor. I have a dark blue sailboat coming by me here. We can see it's nav lights, but you notice it doesn't quite pop as much. This is New England, everything's a dark blue color, but you can still see how well that reflects off the water with those nav lights and getting that pop of color to allow us to see all this with the ambient light. It's worth noting guys, at this point in time, it's an hour past sunset and we have no moon. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this right here for a second, guys. I wanna stress that again, I know I'm blowing through this. This is a full hour past sunset. We have no moon. We have a little bit of cloud cover. And the only thing that we have is the ambient light from the harbor that is giving us this next bit of video footage. And this, guys, I think is where this camera truly excelled and really started to shine was about an hour after sunset. Things were really starting to pop. And this was without a light bar or anything else else added into the mix. So we go ahead, we hit play on this. You start to see the mooring balls. We can see the trees. We can see the sailboats are really starting to show up right there. Again, that white really pops on the screen. And as we turn the boat around a little bit more, we're gonna start to see the lighthouse for the jetty and it's going to start flashing. So now as we're coming into a harbor, we're able to see those things right there, that red light. And again, this is the same footage from the start coming out of the channel. And you can actually start to see from the side of the screen there, we have that sailboat that we just passed now entering the mooring field. So it's really easy to kind of see everything that's going on. So just look at that, guys. That is some really great bit of target separation, being able to see things and getting that ever crucial situational awareness. So... 
that's that. There's the nav light. There's the flashing red light. We're really starting to see everything that is going on. So we're going to go ahead. We'll pause that right there. And from there, guys, I think the video does more justice than me telling you anything about it. What do you need to know? It's about half the price of the competition. However, it is fixed mount. So you're going to have to find a spot to mount this on board your boat that you're not dedicating so much of it that it's seeing the deck. Um, you want to make sure you can see the water. You want to see the sky. Trying to find that happy medium. So you have to give consideration to that. Wiring this in is very simple. It is simply running an Ethernet cable from the camera to the PoE and from the PoE into your MFD. If you are running a Garmin, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, you better have this yellow in there. Somebody's gonna chime in and go, ah, Sally, I plugged it right into the Garmin and it worked, I didn't even use this. You're gonna have problems, mark my words. There will be problems at some point. Use the PoE blocker. Wire in your PoE injector. Now you have power to the camera and you are all set and good to go for having Psyonix daylight, low light, camera on here. So hopefully we'll do a little bit more on water testing. If there's some stuff you want to know about this camera, or maybe you want to see us install it and test it, get a little more in depth. Like I said, this is a test unit, got our hands on early, and I wanted to just see how it works and get you the content. So that's what we did. So that's it, guys. That is the Psyonix Night Wave digital camera. I am told the first round of these are already sold out. So if you're thinking about it, reach out to us. Let's get one ordered up, get you on the books, and hopefully we can get you squared away for the remainder of the boating season. Or not too early to think about winter projects. Just make a really sweet little Christmas present for the boater on your list. Um, that's all I got. If you hung around this long, sound like a broken record. You probably like what you're seeing. You're probably liking the content. So uh, why don't you go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, notification button on YouTube. Navtronics, and we will see you next week. Uh, yeah, probably next week. I got a lot of cool stuff. We still got the KVH TrackNet to install and show you how that works. We've got an Airmar weather station. We've got the new Garmin widescreen, and I think we've got the new Fusion Apollo stereo with low loss audio. Um, so we're really starting to roll into all the new products coming out, and we're excited to show you. So hit that like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next week with something cool. Peace.